To achieve the various goals outlined at the purpose and end of the CTMU movement in my last video, CTMU Future, the vision for the next hundred years, we will need a quick lesson on how such movements get started. Chris Langan told me the important thing for now is to stick with it. We're dealing with human beings who always have the option of waking up to their errors and doing the right thing. Consistently producing high quality CTMU content and building community at first of a few hundred, then a few thousand, and then tens of thousands is a surefire way to have the human capital to A, go viral, and B, build big audacious projects which kindle our creative fire. We must build a community of CTMU collaborators who crank out high quality instructional material on YouTube, Substack, etc. To bring about a fundamental change in people's beliefs and behavior, you need to create a community around them where they can practice, express, and nurture those beliefs, which means in-person communities, schools, monasteries, informal meetings, and co conferences organized worldwide towards the end of CTMU community building. We can also hold public lectures, forums, and seminars, create community-centered social media networks where people can interact with CTMU compatriots in their area, and host professionally produced courses on various aspects of the CTMU on this platform. Small, close-knit groups have the power to magnify the epidemic potential of a message or idea, which is why we're hosting weekly calls for compatriots of the CTMU. Peer pressure is more powerful than the concept of a boss, many times more powerful, because people want to live up to what others expect of them. So, for independent content creators like those in the CTMU community, it is essential to be well coordinated. A distributed network of affiliated creators mirrors the structure of collective human memory and cognition. Much of what we remember is actually stored outside of our brains, especially in our digital age. A strong CTMU community creates a transactive memory system based on who is best remembered, who is best suited to remember certain things. Consider if we had one person, a physics PhD, another who had read all of Plato, and a third who is a monk, deeply versed in the Bible and theology. If these three form a group, they can exploit the bonds of memory and peer pressure to express and communicate across disciplines. The paradox of the epidemic is that to create a contagious movement, you must make many small movements first. The most crucial role of creators focused on education and outreach is to take information and ideas from a highly specialized world like a university doctoral program, ancient Greek philosophy, or a Catholic monastery, and translate them into a language the rest of us can understand. Consistent and constant output for a long time leads to seemingly overnight success. Eventually, the CTMU will tip into popular consciousness. You see this with someone like Andrew Tate, who overnight became one of the most famous people on the planet by people sharing clips of his interviews and content on TikTok, YouTube, etc. Long-form podcasts, short-form content, and medium-length YouTube instructional material captures all levels of engagement. In particular, podcasts connect essential people who have CTMU-adjacent ideas, like two of my podcast guests, Tyler Goldstein, the author of Sentient Singularity Theory, a CTMU-adjacent metaphysic, and Erval, a Platonist YouTuber who's very sympathetic to the metaphysical and political perspectives of Chris Langan. My discussion with Erval was recorded wrong, so it was never published, but it illustrates my point. We shouldn't retreat into our navels until we create the perfect video. Err on the side of action, because it's only through trial and error that we can find out what sticks and what doesn't. A viral movement doesn't take 100% of people on board from the jump, but 1-2% to absolutely and utterly bought in and can communicate a sticky vision. We also need high quality content and a well-defined introductory CTMU curriculum. In 20 hours or less, what is the pathway from not knowing the CTMU to understanding it well enough to explain it to others and be part of the CTMU community? What ought it to be? How will people know where to look? These are all questions we need to consider. As we create authentic, in-person CTMU communities, we can create CTMU-adjacent content on our channels about construction, landscaping, how to finance community building projects, etc., to make money and bring in many different types of people. We need to become exemplars of intellectual and moral perfection to strengthen our movement's credibility and moral license. We can create the world God is designing through a well-networked council of philosophers who express and communicate messages about the nature of ultimate reality and how we ought to relate to one another and live teleological lives. Everything will fall into place. As Margaret Mead said, never doubt that a small group of thoughtful, committed individuals can change the world. In fact, it is the only thing that ever has.
By going viral organically, we can short-circuit the CTMU's cancellation problem, which Langan says arises because of the amorality and skewed psychology of big tech moguls and their employees, none of whom seem to know or care about high-level truth or the future of the human species. We need to get off big tech platforms as soon as possible and make our own online and in-person communities. To illustrate this vision, Chris Langan says that if he had $1 billion, he'd start a university system, a self-sustaining CTMU media empire with him as its chief spokesman, and boot up the CTMU meta-religion, promoting the survival and rightful destiny of humankind, as well as CTMU-based think tanks, pro policy institutes, and advisory committees for the proper maintenance of society, and to rival those which were put into place by international banksters, such as the Council of Foreign Relations, the Trilateral Commission, and others. We can do all this, but we'll need to start small, because we need a billion dollars. Remember the Matthew principle from the Gospels, For whosoever hath, to him shall be given, and he shall have more abundance. But whosoever hath not, from him shall be taken away, even that he hath. The CTMU community is small, but we have heart, soul, and might. It will snowball into something more significant. A CTMU university system, or at least standardized instructional material, gives tangible reality to the community idea. The important thing is to get minimal viable products out there as quickly as possible, iterate upon those based on feedback, and then move to in-person communities as soon as possible. Replying to the script of this video, my friend Greg Wilford said that possessing common body of work as a reference, Chris Langan's papers, is such an extremely valuable foundation for a movement. The same way that God gave us his word in the Bible and people can reference scripture, or the way that communists have the manifesto and Das Kapital. We have all the fully formed extent writings of Chris Langan. He has labored to have a common system of reference and knowledge for his acolytes and for the movement and audience. This common reference should not be underestimated. Such a foundation in writing is what is required to launch, run, and culminate a modern movement. This is why, over the next few years, I will labor to translate all of the insights from the 10 or so major CTMU papers into easily digestible videos in my CTMU Metaphysics series, which is ongoing. Even more so, Chris Langan's new book, which is likely to be released in the near future, will solidify the message and gravitas of the CTMU movement. Here's to an exciting future. I hope this has also spurred some ideas in your head for other bold, audacious projects. Please comment below so we can make this dream a reality. Let the light shine forth in the darkness, and the peace of our Father in heaven be upon you. Like and subscribe. Peace.